Hey, Mr. P here. What's up, guys? It's Mr. Schmitz. In this video, we're going to talk all about the cell membrane, the structure and function, the components of the cell membrane, what it does. Let's go. So to start with a quick refresher, we've talked about lipids previously, and I think we've shown a diagram very similar to this when we did that, but just a, a refresher of what the phospholipid is, because the phospholipid is what makes up our cell membrane. So the phospholipid has two parts. It's got a hydrophilic head made of a phosphate and glycerol, and then it's got two fatty acid chains, which we call the hydrophobic tails. Remember, hydrophilic means it, it likes water or interacts with water. Hydrophobic meaning it would be afraid, in quotes maybe, of water or it wouldn't interact with water, which is why it orients itself tails inward when it forms the bilayer. Yeah, and I'd like to also put in a term called polar and nonpolar. So the head, like you said, would be hydrophilic and therefore polar, interacting with water, and the tails, because they are nonpolar, are going to therefore be hydrophobic. And that would be because water is a polar molecule. Right. Water interacts with other polar molecules very well and doesn't interact with nonpolar molecules. And so when this structure is put together, containing both hydrophobic tails and a polar head or a hydrophilic head, it is said to be amphipathic which is a key term used to describe a molecule that has both polar and nonpolar components. When you put the phospholipids together, like you said, it creates this phospholipid bilayer. Heads orient themselves out of the membrane. This entire thing makes up the cell membrane. We call that the bilayer. So let's get into the cell membrane. In looking at the cell membrane, there are a lot of component parts as a part of the cell membrane besides the phospholipid bilayer. So you can see the phospholipid bilayer illustrated here, just like we showed on the last slide. However, as we get a little bit more in depth, you can see that there are a lot of other pieces as well. And so we're gonna spend some time talking about some of those other pieces that allow for the cell membrane to be semi-permeable, like we talked about being able to determine what can go in and out of the cell. Yeah, and so just looking at this holistically, we can kind of key in on our color chart or our color code. So the lipids are obviously this kind of pink tan color. They primarily make the base of the cell membrane, which is the lipid bilayer. And then you notice a bunch of blue things. And not all of the blue things look the same, but the blue would be proteins. So when we think of a blue structure, they're going to be composed of proteins. Now we know that by looking at this, there are some blue structures or proteins that have what look like holes through the membrane or channels. It's a tube, so to speak. We call those protein channels or channel proteins. And when we look at the proteins embedded within the membrane, we see that there's two divisions. There are some proteins like the channel proteins that span the entire membrane. These are called integral proteins. These are completely integrated within the thickness of the membrane. And there are those proteins that are just on the periphery or just on one side. They don't span through the entirety of the thickness of the membrane. And so we call those peripheral proteins. So integral would be a protein that makes it all the way through. A mm -hmm. peripheral protein would only make it onto one side. Right. And in this particular diagram, we have peripheral proteins that are on the inside. This is the inside of the cell. But it's important to note that their peripheral proteins can be on the exterior of a cell as well. Peripheral proteins, one side of the membrane, integral proteins completely through the thickness of the membrane. There are other proteins that are integral, typically, that have carbohydrate chains attached to them. We call those glycoproteins. Is there any part of that word that can help us? Well, if you look at the prefix and the root word, glyco literally means sugar, much like glucose. Mm -hmm. And so a glycoprotein would be a protein that also contains a carbohydrate chain. And when we nice. talk about structure and function, having this chain of carbohydrates gives it now a slightly different function than some of those other proteins would. Right, and these glycoproteins are going to be kind of like name tags, which give the cell the ability to tell what the neighboring cells are and what their purpose is. Right, our cells are able to communicate, often through contact of these glycoproteins. Mm -hmm. Some of the other things that are sticking out of the cell membrane into the exterior would be glycolipids. This is the exact same type of structure. We have the glyco chain or the carbohydrate chain, but instead of being attached to a protein, it's attached to a phospholipid. So it makes a glycolipid slightly different structure for a slightly different function, but utilized much in the same way. 
Moving into the cell, we see for the first time these cytoskeletal filaments. In the last video, we talked about the cytoskeleton, but it wasn't really included in the diagram that was included in the, in the video. But we can see that all of these cytoskeleton components are going to be attaching themselves on the cell membrane, which anchors this cytoskeleton to the membrane, giving the membrane a little bit of rigidity and kind of helps regulate the shape of the cell. I think it's important to note that um, when we think of a skeleton, obviously we understand our skeletons. They provide structure. They also help us move. Mm -hmm. and when we're talking about cytoskeleton and the, the cellular skeletal components, it does help provide that structure, but these are also used almost like highways in the cell. So molecules will be moved, and that's why it's so important for there to be so many of these, because molecules will be moved all around the cell using these cytoskeletal components, which is why it's necessary for there to be such a vast number of them right here by the cell membrane. Yep. And this membrane does have some movement to it, so we can move materials within the cell using the cytoskeleton, but the phospholipids actually move kind of like the surface of water. If you think of a little ripple on the water, if you think of a, a little waves that are kind of undulating, this cell membrane can kind of look like and move like that. But in order to keep the phospholipids attached to each other, we utilize a molecule called cholesterol and cholesterol helps to add some structural rigidity or some structural integrity to the membrane. The more cholesterol you have, the more rigid the cell membrane is, the less flexibility the cell membrane has, and so cholesterol is an important molecule. It helps give our cell membranes the structure that it has and that it needs to function correctly, but too much cholesterol obviously is a bad thing, which is why having high cholesterol is a, is a negative or a detriment to your health. Yeah, sometimes a, a worrisome term, at least, that's, mm -hmm. that's used a lot of the time. Yeah, a lot of people hear cholesterol and think negatively, but it does have a, a positive purpose in the structure of our cell membrane. So to kind of wrap up our, our discussion of the cell membrane and its structure, Mr. Piper mentioned the ability of the cell membrane to sort of move and flow and respond. For that reason, we re refer to the cell membrane as a fluid. Uh, now, obviously, we don't mean that it is water, but it moves and responds much like a fluid, and it can change its shape mm -hmm. as a result. And so we, we call the cell membrane a fluid for that regard, and we use a term called the fluid mosaic model. So that's a term you will hear quite often for the cell membrane and in reference to the cell membrane. And what we mean by the fluid part of fluid mosaic is that the cell membrane can move and respond and change. Mr. Pfeiffer, what does it mean as a mosaic? So when we think about a mosaic in art, a mosaic is a kind of large installation of very small components. So it can be little small tiles, it can be shells, it can be small pictures, it could be a small pieces of stained glass. But all of those small components come together in a particular way that gives a larger art installation. And so we use that as a model to depict what the cell membrane looks like. Notice that there are a ton of smaller components. This is a really large structure. The cell membrane as an organelle or as a cell structure is huge compared to a lot of other organelles. The cell membrane is bigger than the nucleus. The cell membrane is bigger than the Golgi. The cell membrane is bigger than mitochondria. Cell membrane is bigger than the Ruffi R. And so this is a really, really large cellular structure. It goes all the way around the exterior of a cell and it is composed of a lot of small components that come together in the right ways and in the right concentrations to produce a structure that is conducive to do the things that it needs to do. The phospholipids are tiny, the integral and peripheral proteins are tiny, the carbohydrate chains are very small. All of these come together in a way that makes the cell membrane possible and make the cell membrane work the way it's supposed to work, and we call that mosaic. So when we put the two terms together, fluid mosaic, this is a mosaic of very small components that comes together and isn't rigid like a stained glass window, like a bunch of tiles would be on a wall. This has the ability to move, but it is a model to describe the cell membrane made of a bunch of small components that are put together in a very specific way to give our cells the structure and function it needs. So just like we ended last lecture, the structure of the cell membrane and all of these small pieces allows it to carry out the functions of the cell membrane necessary to move molecules in and out of the cell as the cell needs them. So its structure dictates its function. And it is important as we move into our next video that you understand the structure of the cell membrane because the structure of the membrane, specifically these protein channels and the way the lipid bilayer is set up,
is instrumental in allowing the cell to move materials in and out of the cell. So the next video is all about cellular transport. We're gonna bring this model back and talk a little bit about kind of the application of the cell membrane structure and function. Thanks so much for being here. Like the video and subscribe. We'll see ya.